Good day, beloved. The Lord keep you and bless you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Today, we want to discuss from two characters that what they brought to the table for us is what listening to and learning from over and over until we become that which the Lord has ordained for us. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4, Romans 15 4, it says, Whatever things were written before were written for our learning, so that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we may obtain hope. So when we learn from these characters in the scriptures, the goal is that we, through patience and comfort from the scriptures, we have hope also. Our hope will not be dashed in the mighty name of Jesus. I would like us to discuss Joseph and Uriah. The Bible says in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it said, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of the Lord that you should present your body, body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. This is your reasonable act of worship. And do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world. Do not align yourself with the way the world does its things. You may be in the world, but you are not of the world. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. But instead, be transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. When you do this, he says it this way, you will be able to prove what is good and what is the perfect will of God. I believe you want to walk in the perfect will of God. One sure way is do not think the way the world thinks. Instead, transform yourself by renewing of your mind. Expose yourself to things that edifies. Expose yourself to things that builds. Philippians 4 a says, whatever thing that is true, that is lovely, that is of good report, that is faithful, that is virtual, these are the things you should think on. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Today we want to discuss 18 or 2, like I said about Joseph, and a man in the Bible called Uriah. Uriah enlisted himself in the armies of Israel to defend the integrity of God, to defend, the, to stand for God. Uriah was called back when David slept with his wife and he got him drunk and he said, go to your home. Tomorrow you can go back. The Bible says Uriah slept at the gate. And when he was called, why did you do that? He, he said, he gave David an astonishing report. Why would I sleep in my own house? And the ark of my God is on the battleground. David got him drunk even more. The Bible says he was found sleeping among the slaves, among the servants in the palace. He, he said, even in his drunken state, a system sustained his integrity and that was character he had so much built a character around god that nothing can separate him from the love of god not even a drunken state like i say alcohol or being drunk whatever it is that that they use does not add a character it brings something out from you by the special grace of God, I'm opportunity to cancel a here and there. Um, for example, a man that beats his wife and he's saying, ah, Doc, I'm sorry. I, I, I was drunk at the time. I usually tell them. So, you are drunk and you could beat your wife. You are drunk, you could you know how to keep your wallet. No ways. It is you had the tendency, you have been ruminating it somehow, somehow in your heart that you will one day be when the opportunity came, it you you did what you wanted to do. 
the alcohol did not make you give all the money. You say, hey, my wife, go and spend all this money. You're my wife, go and spend it. The alcohol may push you to beat. And we just end it, end it that way. Praise me to Jesus. Uriah did not sin. Little did he know that his king and his commander on the field were plotting to kill him after the David slept with his wife. But I want us to zero in on the dedication to his God. The character that is called dedication. He was dedicated to his God. Amen. How about the man Joseph? Joseph who was sold like a piece of furniture by his own brothers. He became a slave in Egypt. They put him on the stand and they began to prize him like a furniture. Like a, imagine somebody with a dream. I have a dream. The sun and the moon and eleven stars bow down to me. Now he was on the on the stand. This one cost fifty dollars. No, 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 ten dollars. No, no, fifty fifteen dollars. Imagine, imagine the 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 agony he was passing through emotionally. Hmm. He was bought by Mr. Potiphar, who threw him to the garden like other slaves. Go and start working for me. But there was something about Joseph that stood him out. That Potiphar could take some time to look at him and say, Ah, you, come up higher. Come up higher. Until Joseph became the head of all slaves. I bet you there are a lot of slaves before Joseph. And there are some more after Joseph. But something stood him out. Your character will always stand you out. Your character will always stand you out. So, it would be nice to, to, to mirror your character with your destiny. So, I like to call it uh, character and destiny. The way your character affects your destiny. Something stood Uriah out from, this, from, the, from the short story of his that we read in the Bible. Dedication to God. Dedication to God. He was so dedicated that when his boss sent him to the place that, that was the fiercest, he did not even see the fiercest of the battle. He was saying, I'm going to defend the dignity of my God. But support was withdrawn from him. That was what killed him. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, you will not lack relevant support in Jesus' mighty name. The support that you need to stand will not be denied of you in the name of Jesus Christ. He died because of lack of support. A plan by his own brethren. As the Bible says, the man's enemy shall be the members of his own household. Hmm. But let us just stay on our lane. Character and destiny. The story of Uz U Uriah stood out, especially for those who are trusting God to stand erect, holding the banner of righteousness. Going back to the story of Joseph. He thought that was it. At least now I'm a bit comfortable. So, let me, re let me start relaying back to the dream that I had. Little did he know that Mrs. Potiphar is having eyes on him. A woman of influence. A woman of caliber. A woman... That had everything at her back and call. What would she be looking for in the body, in the life of a slave, undocumented slave? See, it is not about, about what you are presently, it's about who you are. Joseph would have said, Ah, ah, look at me, look at all the chiefs, look at all the men of influence in town. Why me? Why not you? It is not about your state, it's about who you are, it's about what you carry. And Joseph said, Will I do this thing and sin against God? Ha, huh? no, no ways. You might have blocked every access, every you might have tied every loose end, but there is one end that you have not even tied. God, the all seeing. He sees everything. Both darkness and light are the same thing before him. You may before Potiphar's wife could have stooped so low to ask for sex from Joseph, 
She might have tried everything to lure in him. The boy says no ways. He was, she was meeting a brick wall. For him to have got it to a point desperate enough to grab Joseph's coat, he might, she might have set every other thing, every other arena, every other stage, might have set it perfectly. Like nobody will, there will not be evidence traced to her. Whether she was set starved or it was demon walking on her or through her, we don't want to know at this stage. A destiny is at stake. I don't know what is driving you, man, but I've got a prophecy over me. I cannot give up now. I will not fail my God. Will I do this thing and sin against God? He had the character of integrity. He had the character that is suitable to nurture his destiny. He may not know how it will play out, but I know every second of my days I must live to fulfill destiny. You think he will be angry. He will be just be doing things shabbily. No. For the sun and the moon to bow down for me in addition to the level stars, I must be something important. So he carried himself as important. He walked importantly. He talked importantly. He began to live the dream. You can bring the future to the present. If you have the right character, well, we are the dad leading in the prison. At this point, I hope you're not saying, and then what is the essence of him living importantly? Watch and see. Like I said earlier on, the stories that we read in that we read in the scripture, they are for our learning. They are true patient and the comfort looking at the beginning, the process, and the end, we may have hope. He entered into the king's prison that we can call maximum prison. There, many people are going to break down. You expect him to be angry, to be grumpy, to be to be bitter. No. He carried out his everyday work. If you don't know the future, you know the present. So walk the present. As you walk every present, you are walking into your future fulfillment. He was in the prison. He began to behave like the man that the sun and the moon and the level stars will bow to. And the jailer noticed. Don't forget, it is maximum prison. There are crack heads. There are, there are coconut heads there. There are people that cry. Violence is their norm. How come Joseph scaled through? Every day, he be carried himself important. I have a destiny to fulfill. I may not know how it will turn out, but at least I know today. So today, I think it's take closer to the destiny. He began to operate till the jailer noticed him and made him the head of all prisoners. This was the same thing he did in Potiphar's house that made him the head of the Potiphar's slave. Now, the jailer also. And Joseph was so caring that he looked into the countenance of everyone. That was how he could notice the butler and the baker. Good day, guys. Why are you like this? This is prison for cry out loud. Nobody smiles in prison. And this face is too strong. Come, come, come. What can, what can I do for you? And we know the story. And we knew how it ended. Praise mighty Jesus. It was in these two characters, Uriah, Joseph, something stood out that connected them together. They understood their value. They understood their God. And they built up a system that their life kept honoring God. Could you do that also? In my, in my jota, I wrote some few things down but what i learned personally about concerning these two characters that i tattooed your character and your destiny character is defined as the summary of your belief system your value system your being and your attitude let me say that again your character is a summary of your belief system your value system your being and your attitude what you do over and over becomes a norm. And when it continues, it becomes a character. So your value system, 
your belief system, your being, who you really are, and your attitude summarized together is who you are. Your character. They say, as a man thinks in his heart, character is a product of your thinking. So are you. So you are your character. Number two, character is like a light. It reveals the quality of your life. If not because of Bathsheba and Co, we wouldn't have known Uriah. But something, it was not even him being murdered that, that is the basis of our discussion this morning. It was the fact that he stood tall till he died. He stood tall. Look at Joseph. I would rather leave my coat in your hands, man. I will not do this thing and sin against my God. I've got his word over my destiny. I will not let you to corrupt it. Can we say the same of you? Can man testify well of your character? Number three, character displays integrity. Your character would let us know. In yesterday's Bible discussion in church, we learned about some people that were in the book of Nehemiah that they, they were called to keep the treasury of the city because they had a good report. They had a good report. How about you, beloved? Your character displays your integrity. Listen, hard work can get you to the top. That is the normal thing. But it is your character that will maintain you at the top. Last night, I was just scrolling through my phone and I read about a garbage man who won $20 million in a lottery and he gambled the whole money away. He went back to be, to be a garbage man. This time I hear things like this, it, it, it vexes my spirit. Do you know why he went from garbage man to a millionaire and went back to garbage man? Because his character is centered around garbage. So if you take him out of his character, there is an, there, there's an error in the system. The system will reboot and bring him back. So you cannot rise above your character. Plain and simple. Character determines how you will get to your destiny if you will get there. I'll give you an example there. Look at Samson. He was so consecrated that even before he was conceived, the they Lord had to consecrate the mother. You will carry the pregnancy. No alcohol, no this, no that, no that. Because consecrate yourself. This guy coming through you is going to be a Nazarene. We all know how Samson ended. It was so bad that when Philip was told about Christ, he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? We remember how Samson started and how he ended. Can anything good come from there? I don't think so. Jesus has never blamed Philip. Uh -uh. In fact, if he said he an Israelite, whom there's, there's no girl. Your character is very vital. Number six, your character fits on consistency. You can't say, you can't say I have a good, good character and people can't really pinpoint consistently what your pattern is. You are not a chameleon. Amen. In fact, with Camino's character is that it changes color. We know. How about yours? Character fits on consistency. The quality of your character is the quality you will give your destiny. Yes, Samson destroyed the, the Philistines as much as he could. The Bible says at the end of his life, Samson killed more Philistines at his death than when he was alive combined. Yes, beautiful story. Who, where is Samson to get the Medal of Honor dead? There's nothing glorious about Posumos Award. Watch your character. Watch your character. And finally, take time to build your character. 
your built character will in turn build you. That's how it works. Anyone that wants to fulfill destiny must take time to build his character or her character. I believe you have learned a thing or two today about character and destiny. You are blessed in Jesus' name.